Hi everyone and welcome back to The Shack and in today's episode my old eyes are in for a treat because Tomlov have sent me this DM201M digital microscope to test out. So let's start by building this RC2014 micro. Here at The Shack, we'd like to give a huge thank you to the sponsor for this video, PCBWay. They help us out with all of our PCB fabrication needs and make fantastic boards at amazingly competitive prices. And it's not only PCBs that are on the menu. Apart from other fabrication services like CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication and injection moulding, PCBWay also have a great projects library of cool stuff to build from people all around the world. Oh, and if you don't like waving a soldering iron about, they can even assemble your PCBs for you. That's the PCB way. Right, on with the show. Okay, given the content of the channel, it should be no surprise that I'm a gentleman of a certain age. And therefore, just like these old retro machines that we work on, bits of me are starting to break down and there's the need for a bit of modern augmentation. Long-term viewers will know that I don't really review things on the channel very often and certainly don't endorse anything that I don't actively use myself. So a little while ago now, I was asked if I would review this Tomlov DM201M, which is a digital microscope and multimeter combined, and apparently the first of its kind to market. And this landed at a time when I was becoming a bit frustrated at the need for yet another glasses prescription, and at the same time, doing lots of soldering and other close-up work, so I said I'd give it a look. I already had a smaller digital microscope, which to be honest, I don't use that often for reasons I can't really put my finger on, but the word fiddly flits around my brain when I think about it. That, coupled with this potentially replacing my two multimeters, could see this new device making soldering, close-up work and mistake finding a bit easier and save some space in my mobile toolkit. So we can already see that the display is really sharp and cycling through the multimeter options, we have DC voltage, AC voltage, diode mode, continuity, capacitance, frequency and resistance. And testing this resistor, we're reading 1K, which is spot on. As previously mentioned, I only use my other microscope sparingly and never for soldering as I could never really get used to working in the 2D world of a screen. I'm told it takes practice so I decided to solder this entire build looking only at the screen and to be honest I found it quite difficult to start with. What I'm seeing on the screen isn't to scale with what I know my hands are doing and there's no real perception of depth which led to a lot of fumbling around, and that's not the fault of the microscope, which is perfectly clear, more my buffoonery. But it didn't take long to get the hang of it. In fact, after only a few minutes, I started to see the benefits, and also to realise just how bad my eyesight is. Working through the scope like this allows you to see the quality and consistency of the joints and also helps you to pick up any bridges you might have inadvertently made. I realise I'm probably preaching to the converted and you're all thinking, well, duh, but working this way hasn't really ever occurred to me because I always thought I had pretty good vision, but even with perfect eyesight, working through this scope will definitely be clearer. The DM201M comes with integrated lights on little bendy legs, so you can always find the right angle to illuminate your work. The whole thing is also a nice sturdy metal construction. I like that, it doesn't wobble about or move while you're working. I'm the one doing the wobbling, not the microscope. So after a few minutes, the first few joints are done and it all looks nice and clean and tidy. So next up in our little build are these 104 capacitors, which means 10 and four more zeros, or 100,000 picofarads, or 100 nanofarads, or 0.1 microfarads. We can see that with the DM201M in capacitance mode, it's reading this capacitor at 93.4 nanofarads, which is absolutely fine. Thank you. 
So while I'm finishing soldering in the rest of these components, I should point out that this RC2014 Micro is part of the RC2014 modular 8-bit range, which is well worth a look at. There's a link in the description. I did a review of the RC2014 Mini a while ago, and there's a link on the screen if you want to see what that's all about. Now, I suppose I should give some statistics about this microscope because it's actually quite an impressive beast. The screen is a 7 inch IPS with 178 degrees of viewing angle, so it's really easy on the eye. There's also an HDMI output so you can hook up to an external monitor if you're presenting or a colleague needs to also see what you're doing. And you can always hook up the HDMI cable to an image capture device if you want an alternative to the micro SD card. Tomlov supply a 32 gig SD card with the unit by the way, which is probably more than enough for most of us. One feature I'll probably end up using is that this thing has a built-in battery, so it's super portable. The magnification goes all the way up to 1200 times, so combined with the battery it's great to take out in nature and see things up close. It comes with a remote control too, but the only real benefit of that I can think of is that you can avoid shaky video by not actually touching the unit. The features of the multimeter are handled through buttons on the probes anyway. Although the unit does have a height adjustment of up to 10 inches, it's really that back support and height adjustment that limit the usability of this for larger PCBs. To work on anything larger than a few inches across, you'd need to take the unit out and hold it. Probably better to get this mounted on some kind of boom arm so that it can hover over a much larger area. All in all, it's a really nice unit very well put together and with excellent magnification and a really clear display. Soldering like this has been a bit of a learning curve, but by the time I'd completed this RC2014 Micro, I'd gotten the hang of it and was wondering what it would be like on something a little more challenging. Before that though, let's test to see if this RC2014 Micro works straight away. Hooked up to the USB port and running putty, we'll see if we can connect. And well, that looks good to me. That whole thing probably took about 35 minutes from start to finish and I knew each solder joint was good as I did it so that's less room for error and a cleaner build to boot. Okay, let's try something a little more tricky. This is an Atari ST hard disk interface, the ACSI to SD kit to be precise. And this was sent in by a viewer who asked to remain anonymous and they in their own words had made a pig's ear of trying to solder this together, having never done any surface mount soldering previously. They wondered if any of this was salvageable, so I thought we could take a look under the microscope and see what the damage is. And it's not pretty. There's a load of corrosion or something that's all over it. It looks like a metric ton of flux, and it looks like we may have some damage to the traces. Okay, let's see if we can clean this up and at least get the chip off the board. We'll start with some isopropyl alcohol to clean up as much as we can before we get the heat gun out. It really is quite a mess. We'll pop some new flux on there and then we'll go at this with the heat gun at 450 degrees centigrade and about 50% airflow. There's no way I'd be attempting this without a microscope. This chip is about the size of a fingernail and this is certainly making me think about taking on some more complex projects.
several days later. Well the chip finally popped off and my goodness what a mess. I'll speed up the next several hours I spent cleaning this PCB and the microscope filmed it all for posterity. And well here's the final result of where I managed to get the board to. Much better and hopefully this will still work when we get a new chip and a new chip is definitely needed as this one is beyond my abilities, broken pins at this scale equals a nope from me. So can I recommend the Tomlov DM201M digital microscope? Absolutely. Once you get used to working through the medium of a 2D screen, you quickly realise that for some projects, especially when you get to SMD parts, a microscope is the only way to go. Throw in the multimeter functions too and you've got a good combination. Build quality is good and the support from Tomlov was fantastic as the first unit supplied had an issue with the multimeter, but Tomlov were quick on the ball to supply a replacement unit. You can pick one of these up for just under $200 US or about £160 UK, which I think is a pretty good deal. Okay, lastly, for those of you waiting to hear about the custom build Spectrum giveaway, details of that will be coming soon. I'm just navigating the legalities and hoops to ensure that it's all fair and above board. Right, thanks again to Tom Love and to you lovely people for watching. Until next time in the shack, it's goodbye from me.